Good morning. Now let us move to part 2. In part 1, we talked about the etiology of the rheumatic fever and the global burden on the one side. And in part 2, we are talking about the pathogenesis of the rheumatic fever, about the microbiological part of the rheumatic, rheumatic fever. So, at this point, let us start with the group A beta hemolytic streptococci. So, group A beta hemolytic streptococci. So, what is group A beta hemolytic streptococci? So, first let us know the microbiological structure or the let us know something about the organism. Let us draw this is the this is the cocci group A beta hemolytic streptococci. So, let us draw what are the structures that are important in group A beta hemolytic streptococci. So, I am drawing here a car. This is the this is a car. It means it is not a car, it is a carbohydrate and this carbohydrate is C carbohydrate. C carbohydrate. What is C carbohydrate? C carbohydrate is the antigenic structure. It is a antigenic structure that is present in the cell wall. It is present in the cell wall. So, this is a antigenic structure, antigenic structure present in the cell wall and based on the different types of C carbohydrate, based on different types of C carbohydrate, the American microbiologist Rene Lancefield, she divided the organism into different groups and those groups are group A, B and so on. So, on the types of based on the types of C carbohydrate, based on the types of C carbohydrate, Rene Lancefield, Lancefield grouped the streptococci into group A, B and so on, based on the types of C carbohydrate. This is the antigenic structure. The most important structure for us, for the case of rheumatic fever in streptococci is the next. So, what is this? What is this? This is the M protein. M protein and it is one of the most important components. It is one of the most important component that we need to understand to know the pathogenesis of rheumatic fever. So, this is most important virulent factor. This is the most important virulent factor and what does this M protein dodge? So, it causes the inhibition of the complement activation, it does not allow the complement activation, it does not allow the complement activation. So, it prevents, so it prevents from phagocytosis, it prevents from phagocytosis, prevents from phagocytosis. Now, remember the M protein is the most important structure to understand the pathogenesis of rheumatic fever and M protein it is the most important virulent factor. Talking about the M protein, it inhibits the complement activation and it prevents from phagocytosis. But when this organism attacks a human body, the human body produces the antibodies and these antibodies, these antibodies, these are the antibodies, it goes and binds to 
m protein and when it binds to m protein when it binds to m protein it causes the it causes the destruction it causes the destruction of m protein by the macrophages or neutrophils so the main point to remember is the m protein is the weakest structure that means when our bodies try to produce the antibodies these antibodies attack the m protein it binds to the m protein and it causes the destruction at the same time m protein is the most important virulent factor else as we talk about the c a carbohydrate and m protein now what are the other important structures they are the enzymes so other are enzymes the first let us see what are the important enzymes that are present in the streptococci the first point is first is strepto streptolysin o streptolysin o the second is strepto lysin yes streptolysin o and streptolysin s so what does this o these both are the enzymes but this is a oxygen level means what do you mean by oxygen level it means that this enzyme this enzyme streptolysin o is inactivated by the oxygen they are level to the oxygen so they are inactivated by the oxygen whereas this is oxygen stable this is oxygen stable both of these enzymes they causes the hemolysis both of these enzymes they causes hemolysis so what is the difference the important difference between these two enzyme is streptolysin o it is anti genic whereas this is non anti genic it is non anti genic so i talk about the c carbohydrate i talked about m protein and about the enzymes i talked about the streptolysin o and streptolysin s two enzymes now what are the other enzymes there are some other enzymes like strepto kinase it causes the degradation of the fibrin it causes the degradation of the fibrin and it causes the fibrin degradation and the fourth is pyrogenic angiotoxin this pyrogenic angiotoxin or erythrogenic angiotoxin this pyrogenic angiotoxin or erythrogenic angiotoxin sometimes it acts as a super antigen it acts as a super antigens which causes the super stimulation of the t cell releasing the inflammatory cytokines as well as this causes the stimulation of the b cell to release the auto reactive antibodies remember it causes the super stimulation of the t cells on one side it causes the super stimulation of the t cells and the other side it causes the super stimulation or activation of the b cells to release the auto reactive antibodies here it is releasing the inflammatory cytokines so it is releasing the inflammatory cytokines on the one side and on the other side it is re re releasing the auto reactive antibodies so these are the super antigens and the most some of the strains with pyrogenic angiotoxins they causes the scarlet fever now remember the term scarlet fever it has some correlation with the rheumatic fever as well as streptococci that is the important point now i'll mention 
only some of the important other enzymes like do you remember any other enzymes in streptococci yes that is that is c5a peptidase c5a peptidase and c5a peptidase yaluru needs yaluru needs c5a peptidase anti c5a peptidase and here is anti c5a peptidase and dnas 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 so these are the enzymes that are present in the streptococci group a beta hemolytic streptococci and the most important thing let us forget everything the most important thing is we are focusing m protein we are focusing m protein so now in third section i will talk about what happens when streptococci attacks a pharynx what happens when streptococci group a beta hemolytic streptococci it attacks the pharynx when it, what happens when it causes the pharyngeal infection or pharyngitis so let us see on this side so remember remember this is the human body this is rough human body this is a rough human body now in the environment there are these are the cocci the streptococci group a beta hemolytic streptococci and there are m protein present here now this goes to the human body it is going to attack the human body what is the what is the most probable age group of this human body it is 5 to 15 years because we have already studied that step to the infection the rheumatic fever it is more common in 5 to 15 years of age group now what happens this goes to the pharynx it goes pharynx it causes pharyngitis now remember remember this is the most important thing that you have to remember you have to understand to understand the rheumatic fever so the first thing is the organism is going to attack the pharynx in pharynx it is causing the pharyngitis now there is a release of antibodies these are the antibodies these antibodies are released against against the m protein so these are released against m protein this causes the destruction of the organism the streptococci and after three weeks these antibodies they go everywhere they go everywhere so they are traveling they are going they are moving to they are searching in the whole body where there are the m protein present in the whole body so they go as a security guards so remember the organism it comes it attacks our pharynx at the same time our body recognizes okay there is something bad there is something the something some problem is with the pharynx or some one is coming to attack the pharynx so against those organism our body produces the antibodies remember our body produces the antibodies to attack the organism at the same time these antibody these are the security guards of the body and these guards they move all over the body they move all over the body now what happens now this is the most important thing that we should understand what happens now when it goes everywhere in the body now here you reach a heart these are the joints at the same time this is a cns brain here is a skin and here is a subcutaneous structures 
Now, remember these antibodies, these security guards, they are moving all around the body to search whether there are something bad going on in the body or not. But the problem here is the security guards which are produced by the body, our body which are produced by our body, now it thinks they think that the lami actin, laminin, and acetyl glucosamine, they are the members, they are the supporters or they are the family members of the M protein. They cannot recognize that these structures, these molecules are the molecules of our own body. So, what they do is these antibodies, they go and they start binding with the normal body components. So, they start binding with the normal body component. When they start binding with the normal body component, now here is the problem. Here is the problem. It goes in most of the important organ of the body. It goes in most of the important organ of the body. Now, which are the organ? The first is joints. The second is heart. The first is joints, the second is heart, the third is joints, heart and the third is brain and the fourth skin and subcutaneous. They go, these, anti, these antibodies, they go and they, they go to joints, they go to heart, brain, skin and subcutaneous. Now what they do is? they go there and they started attacking the normal molecules of the body. They started attacking the normal molecules of the body and there starts the inflammatory process. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it is a multi-system, it is a multi-system immunologically mediated, immunologically mediated and the inflammatory disease condition. Now, here I complete the first three lines which I told earlier. Rheumatic fever is a multi-system, immunologically mediated, inflammatory disease condition. Why it is a multi-system? Because we have seen that it is affecting different system, musculoskeletal system, cardiovascular system, central nervous system and integumentary system. That is why it is multi-system. Now why it is immunologically mediated? Because there is a production of the antibodies, these antibodies which are produced by the body against the M protein. These antibodies, they cannot recognize on body molecules. They cannot recognize on body molecules. So, it goes and bind there. It goes and bind there. And the site where it binds, they start the inflammatory process. It is just like fighting. Fighting of the antibodies with the normal body molecules where they start the inflammatory reaction and this inflammatory process is the non-superative inflammation, non-superative inflammatory process. Now, did you, I think you understand what did I mean in the first part. There is a multi-system immunologically mediated inflammatory disease condition. So, let us just revise one more time. At this part, in part 2, I told about the streptococci group, group A, beta hemolytic streptococci. Though there are many several enzymes, some of the components, some of the antigenic components are present in the shell wall, shell wall. But the most important antigenic component is the M protein. When these streptococci, streptococci, they attack a human body, they attack the pharynx, when they cause the pharyngitis, antibodies are produced against this M protein. And these antibodies, the antibodies produced by the body destroys the body. The antibodies produced by the human body start destroying its own body, starts destroying itself. It goes to different organs and there, is, there it, it starts the inflammatory process. And now see the inflammatory process is going on in the joints, heart, brain, skin and subcutaneous structures. Now, in the third part, we will see the clinical features, what happens in joints, heart, brain, skin and subcutaneous tissue. <laughs>